Lovely, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time, one of the most precious commodities that we have. So thank you for giving your time to join us on the next in a series of our Foresight Lectures. We've now been creating these Foresight Lectures for almost three years. On almost every month of the year, um, we find one of the wonderful presenters like Anne, who share a bit of their knowledge and experience just to help you to, to think about some ways of running your business, how to develop your business, and sometimes a little bit more with a coaching background as well, just to inspire you to do amazing things or continue to do amazing things. If you wanted to see some of the back um, presentations, they are on our website, the Alpha Group website. Um, I think there's 35 of them that are there at the moment. It's a lot of great topics and great speakers that we've had. Um, this is based around the Alpha Group. The Alpha Group is a peer-to-peer -peer organization, and we help businesses all over the world to grow and to develop. And the way that we do that is we help them to look at the correct strategies that they should have in place within their business. Now, you might think that's obvious. That everybody has the right strategies in place, but unfortunately, it's not. Um, and I get surprised every time I speak to new business owners who come on as members and ask them about the strategies that they have in place, and the majority of them uh, don't. But that's where we step in. We help them to do that. We're currently doing it in 28 countries around the world. So I guess we could classify as being a global organization. And we do this through running Alpha Boards, which are an opportunity for entrepreneurs, business owners from the SME market sector to come in and sit with us for six and a half hours. And we take them through our processes to help them to grow, to develop, and their businesses to thrive. If you'd like to know any more about the Alpha Group, I'm pretty sure you've got my email address. Um, you can certainly check us out on our website and have a look at what we do. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free, please, to come over and, and share them with me, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Let me introduce today's speaker. Today is all about um, Anne, and she's going to share with us, I would like to say, a vast amount of knowledge that she has gained over many, many years. And if I remember rightly from your profile, 47 years? 47 years. <laughs> possible to have that um, but anyway a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience again about how to build how to grow how to scale your business um, and the things that you love because we all go into business because we love a particular thing a particular activity a particular opportunity and and it's that passion that keeps us obviously driving one of the things I also remember and from your profile is that you have over 10,000 hours of coaching Oh, my gosh. I always like to say I've got nearly 2,000, and I thought I was doing pretty well with that. But I, I'm still a learner, apparently. So, Me too. Yeah, absolutely. We're always continuing to learn. So without any further ado, I don't want to steal Anne's thunder and tell you too much about her. I'm sure she'll um, share some of her knowledge and experience with you over the next 45 minutes. So, Anne, thank you very much again for joining us and sharing your knowledge, and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colin. Good. Welcome, everybody. So great to be here with you. I'm going to be spending my 45 minutes with you sharing a, I'm going to call it a twist on business development that might land a bit counterintuitively, but I want to invite you to come along uh, as I share the strategies that I've been supporting entrepreneurs with for the past 15 years. That was just me also moving, opening up my slides. Uh, in honor of the fact that we don't all learn auditively, I've got slides to both keep me on track and to keep you in the visuals of what I'm talking about. So let me just jump right in. Um, as promised, what I'm going to focus on with you today is how to build, grow, and scale directly with organizations. We as entrepreneurs know that organizations are in a very powerful path about how we can build our business. They collect humans for us and give us an opportunity to serve them with focus. The key question is, is how do we get in to be able to do this work? Well, in 2023, 5.5 million new business applications are opened in the U.S. alone. This is the biggest 
year ever and the third consecutive year of historic growth of small businesses. Again, a very US centric data point, but since we're all competing quote unquote globally, this is relevant to wherever you are in the world. There are more and more people who are leaving organizations to launch their own business. Other interesting fact is 80% of these businesses are single solopreneur with no employees. The number one advice, this comes from an article that Fast Company published just yesterday, by the way. And number one advice that all of these people coming into the marketplace are being given is that they must implement basic SEO practices. They must improve their website's visibility on search engines, use keywords, create descriptive mega tags, and ensure that we have clean URL structures. So everyone who's entering the market, the, the business advice we hear drives us towards landing business through this kind of a format. Well, I wanna to talk to you about the three common mistakes to avoid that are all advice-based. The three strategies that really work to use instead, and then the three biggest levers for your success. Again, counter, counterintuitive and definitely counter market advice. Uh, this is a bit of just a quick highlight of my background. Why and where did I get the approach that I'm gonna be sharing with you? Where did it come from? Well, it was forged in my 30 years in corporate holding roles like the head of procurement and head of HR and leadership development for a Fortune 200 company. It's in those roles where I learn from the inside what it takes and what organizations are looking for when they're hiring people from the outside. For the past 17 years, this is where I get my 47 call in, for the past 17 years, I've had my own very successful the leadership executive a coaching development firm that's been serving organizations. And yes, I'm actually 12,000 hours now coaching hours all in organizations. For the past 15 years of that time, I've also been supporting other business owners to use the same strategies that came natural to me almost as a blind spot that I figured everyone else would understand, but helping them with how to build the businesses that they love six and seven figure business using the same strategies that I use myself. All of this is the proof point and why I'm really inviting you to play with the concepts that I'm going to be laying out now. And I'm going to start with the, the common mistakes to avoid that are almost in some industries, the only business building advice we hear. So the, from that perspective, I'm calling them the big myths. All the stuff that we get flooded with, all the stuff I'm still flooded with in my industry that are strategies that have gotten industry stuck with very low percent of business owners being able to make a living doing this work. So we're going to bust these myths. And the first common myth that I want to bust is that you need to have a, a niche, a target client or an avatar. You need to know exactly who you're selling to. I'm going to go through these common advice-based myths all at once, and then we're going to bust them with what you could do instead. So the second bust is the one I alluded to as we open. You must post ads. You must be online. You must optimize your SEO. You must be able to be found in the online world. I meet so many entrepreneurs that are spending all of their effort right in this work. They're figuring out funnels, they're figuring out products, they, they're Infusionsoft's best friends. But what they're not doing is able to build your business in what is an extremely crowded online market. The numbers that I just mentioned, the 5 million new business owners who have entered US only are being told this is where they should focus all of their work. And then last is that the myth that you must learn how to sell, sell, biz dev, that really the selling tactics and the selling tools are really how to ensure that you are landing this business. 
what I want to share with you is a, a way to get in what I call the success zone that is totally different than all of those three, I want to call it the crowded field that those three most heard from me, for me at least, business development strategies get us all stuck in. And so the success zone is this beautiful, beautiful spot in the middle. So at the high end, there are huge organizations that specialize in doing some of the services that you deliver as well. Those big firms can be consulting firms. It could be McKinsey. It could be uh, Coin Ferry. It could be Lee Heck Harrelson. Whatever big players that you know are playing in the same space of your service, they're at the, they're at the high, the high list here. At the bottom are a whole new series or a whole new market of low cost commodity based platforms that are also providing services. Think LinkedIn learning if you are if you are a trainer or a leadership development group. Think better up if you are a an executive coach or a leadership coach. But there are low cost platforms that are leveraging volume and reducing the price of the product in the marketplace. So the strategies that I'm gonna be talking about with you for the rest of my time with you here is how do you target this beautiful success zone in the middle, in between those two? That is where the coaches, the consultants, the trainers, that's where they are finding success is getting in that sweet success zone. And so, I'm going to go one by one about the common mistakes and just talk about the strategy that you could employ instead. Let me also say these strategies are proven and you've been used for more than the 15 years that I've been teaching it for the whole 17 years of my business. So let's start with this very first one. Um, go ahead and hit uh, anything, hit anything on your Omicrons, your emojis if you've heard that you must have a niche or a target client or an avatar, anybody hear that as you've started to build your business? Hit whatever little emoji you want to pop up in the space. Yeah, thank you, Annie. Thank you. It's a really common one. It's a common one that keeps people entrepreneurs stuck trying to figure out what is this little tiny list of avatars that they can serve. Here's what's really powerful to land, what's different, to land business with organizations. This work is landed 90 to 95% through relationships in that success zone. So rather than target an avatar or a client, really think about investing your time by building out and spending time with your relationships. I call these your killers, your no love, like, and respect. These people are the people who will bring you in to support them and support them in a way that enables you to serve their needs, not a niche. So the needs that organizations are already investing in, you connect as one of the solution providers through your relationships. So building your relationships is actually how you go through versus go through with social media. You can the, the key is with social media, you can spend so much time online. And that time online is nowhere near gives you the return that spending just a fraction of that time with the people, people who already know, like, love, and respect you. Focused on needs, not niche. Now, the reason needs is so critical with organization versus niche is Organizations have all the avatars. What they are looking for are people who can support them with the needs they're seeking to serve. When we over narrow down our, how, who we say we serve or our approach to the market to include all the way down to avatar, we are actually limiting, limiting our opportunities 
to serve organizations. One example of this can be simply as if you are someone who has uh, products or programs or consults in the space of emotional intelligence. If what you say is you offer emotional intelligence training and development for engineers or left brain people for whom this isn't natural, you've just arbitrarily limited your scope. With organizations, when you share the need you serve is elevating the ability for people to connect human to human, then they, the sponsor that you're working with will know exactly who in their organization could benefit from what you do. So the avatar is their job, the sponsor's job for this work, not ours. To the point of learning how to sell, what I want you to get a sense for is, since I've already said this business has landed 90% through relationships, I want to say out loud, loud and clear, selling to a relationship can do more harm than create sales. So the key is not to sell. The key is to serve. Now, serving is all about loving on the one you're with. So we just talked about going into your relationships, understanding and sharing what you know about what's happening in the marketplace, understanding what their experience and their needs are. And in that point, when you could move to selling, my invitation is don't. Instead, serve them. Show them how you could help them in that same area by actually moving into service with them. There's such a powerful shift that happens when you are connecting with someone who already knows, loves, likes, and respects you. And you're helping them understand the needs that you're serving in the marketplace. You ask them what their experience with that is. You move in the moment to help them see how you might be of service help them in that moment and the outcome is they turn around and say oh this has been so valuable now how might I help you honoring the relationships where they are versus moving into selling before something's ready is a huge part of what is different about how to land business with organizations the counterintuitive part is while you're doing this work, you are selling you, not your services. When we sell services to an organization, when we start moving into our services, what we do is we become a vendor. We become a vendor. We vendorize ourselves. We, we humans love to know what bucket to put people in so we, it's, we can compartmentalize. Oh yeah, okay, so you're one of those. I put you in this pile over here. As soon as we become a vendor, we actually have just made getting into organizations so much more difficult for us. Organizations are not looking for more vendors. They are not looking for more providers of services. Trust me, at always in my years in the procurement space, our goal was to reduce the number of vendors and to shift to more partner relationships. So our opportunity in this beautiful, sweet success middle is to go in as a partner with solutions, not a vendor with services. So it's so easy to start talking about our services and move off of sharing why they should trust us as a uh, strategic partner, but all of the richness for how you land this work is landed through them trusting you. So where you've been, what you've done is critical. Why should they entrust their talent, their systems, their processes, whatever your services are, they will believe that you can help them right after they know what you have done. So coming in, really being clear, about who you are, what you've done, what gives you the credibility to be able to do and be their partner 
and success versus leading in with SEO and talking about your services gets you into this beautiful success middle. We're going to talk more. Those are the strategies that really work. What are some of the big levers for our success? The very first lever for success is to own our value and own our label. Our value is really whole person. Everything that you've done in your life and in your work informs your ability to be that strategic thought partner, that powerful solution provider. And so critical is that we stand and own our value first so that others will believe it right after we do. Owning our value says we go into the spaces where we have high credibility. That is a huge part of landing this work as well. Not overstretching and overreaching because we think something is pop popular or we're noticing that there's a huge market trend there. It's really about going where we have credibility. So mapping your credibility with the areas that enables you to be a highly credible source a highly credible strategic partner to help them solve those needs is one of your critical, critical steps. So is owning the lane that that puts you in. The most powerful thing about owning the lane is in our lane, we're not, we don't compete. When I talked about the 5 million people who are now all figuring out SEO and how to show up online with keywords, Man, there is a whole lot of competition at both the high end and the low end of the sweet spot that I'm speaking about. You know, whether you're a, a big, huge firm or a platform firm, lots of competitions on, competition on both ends. As entrepreneurs, what competition does to us is it takes us out of our sweet spot. Competition drops us into feeling like it's win or lose. Competition can prompt scarcity mindset. And in scarcity mindset, we can fall trapped to attachment that every conversation that we're having, we're feeling like we have to get an outcome from it. We get attached because we are in scarcity and we just are showing up in a totally different way. We're showing up, whether we want to or not, as selling. Because we're attaching outcome to the conversation that we're having. And these conversations are with people in this process who already know, like, love, and respect us. And if we move to that selling before the conversation walks us there where they're asking us to, we are at risk of doing relationship harm. Staying unattached, not being triggered by competition, knowing that we're here to serve and we're serving the one we're with is really what enables us to show up well and be fully full mindset, heart set in service. Really staying focused in our lane also enables us not to be distracted. So the other thing that competition does is it starts a comparison game where we're distracted about what other people are offering. Oh my gosh, let's see what their backgrounds are. We get triggered from an ego perspective of, I don't have enough. And as soon as we go to, I don't have enough, we start getting distracted and going to look for more. Why? Because we really need it for our solutions. Well, that would be a valid reason. But when we get distracted through a competitive lens, we just start looking this making up that we need to have what everybody else has, which takes us out of our lane, our sweet spot of credibility. The other thing that, that losing focus does is it takes us off the lane of only investing our time on big levers, big levers. Big levers for landing business with organization is every moment you invest 
warming your relationship, building your relationships, serving your relationships. That has the highest ROI on landing business. Getting distracted and moving into social media posting or other things that are so much easier to do, sitting behind the screen of our computer, much lower risk, much less vulnerability. Small lever, small pay. So really focusing our time and energy on the things that are most important. Just as in sports, where the game is actually won in the locker room, not on the field, the same thing is true for us with key lever number two. Key number two is all about doing our work doing the work we need to do on us so that we can stay in abundance, so that we can stay in the most powerful mindset, showing up with mindset, heart set, without attachment as we seek to serve. And then when we serve, make sure we've done the work so we're delivering high values, high value outcomes. All of this is what is most critical so that you can serve the relationships that you have most powerfully. So your success is one in the inner work. Hang on one second. My uh, coworker has decided not to cooperate right now. Let me fix that. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, if you do have any questions that you'd like to put to Anne, then by all means, write them in the chat and we can pick those up at the end of her presentation. So anything you'd like to ask, write it up in the chat and then we'll put it to her at the end. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank you Colin. Thank you for tag teaming while Captain was barking at a squirrel. I feel so much safer now. The the inner work is actually the work that enables us to show up most powerfully and to manage the behaviors that I see get in the way most often as entrepreneurs are seeking to have the conversations to land this business. Our locker room is our pre-work. And the last thing in terms of the biggest lever is the fact that truly as you're building your business, struggling is optional. The work that, that Alpha offers, the work that many people offer, there is such, such payback for investing in a mentor. Seek out support from those who've been there for those who've done it for those who are offering a hand up so that you can go faster i meet entrepreneurs after they've been struggling for years and the most common conversation we have in our very first discussion is oh my gosh i should have reached out years ago so no regrets just reach out to invest in a mentor get the support you need to go faster Faster is the um, smarter, wiser about what will really work, but even more importantly, someone who will help you to see the strategies that are most effective in the market that you're seeking success in can so accelerate and shorten the distance to landing and growth. You'll be so glad you did. The success zone, again, I really want to encourage you to explore with through the relationships that you've built in your life, where you have the opportunity to land business as a strategic partner, someone who leverages everything they've done in life and in work to help serve the needs that organizations are already investing in. Organizations invest huge amounts of money seeking solutions. 
The advantage of you in the success zone is that you have the opportunity, as opposed to the big firms who operate from the perspective of one size fits all, here's our process, we know it works, or the lower level platform commoditized work, which is absolutely commoditized versus high value, you get to play in the sweet spot of optimized, one size fits one, truly leveraging and making a difference for the organization. That's your value proposition in the success zone. A few strategies that work in this space, and they all start with, if you look from left to right in terms of how you build and grow your business from first building it all the way up to maximizing it, they all start on the top line with the first priority is to identify, create high value services. Set your service delivery apart, create, do whatever you need to build in, reverse engineer for high value outcomes. Next, build high value relationships. I, I love to say that um, most entrepreneurs that I meet are new to business or new to being an entrepreneur, but they're not new to the world, right? Really leverage the relationships you've already built by looking back to see who's there, who already is on your list of no love, like, and respects you, and start there. I have yet to meet an entrepreneur who didn't already have all the relationships they needed to build the business that they love. Really, the next lever is going beyond serving an organization for the first time, seek to build a partnership with that organization. Land and expand. If you were successful and delivered with one service, how can you either expand it and do more of it inside or how can you expand the size of the service itself to create greater, to address greater scope? But it's not about finding a whole lot of organizations in this success zone in order to build the business you love. It's about finding partner relationships that become substantial, not one side, not one time, one and done's, but substantial solutions for their needs together. The next level down that you'll see to move to optimize is multiple partnerships. And then last, moving across this and this development, one of these, this development is business development model is then you add scale. You add scale at the point where your revenues are scaled to the, so that you still have healthy margins, healthy revenue after you're scaling through either people, product, or process. Building up in this fashion enables you to not just make a difference, but to make a living while you're making a difference doing your great work. And that's the goal, that not only is there legacy that you're building through what you do, but there's lifestyle that creates the ability for you to put life first and build the business that enables it versus comes at the expense of it. So as Colin mentioned, I want to come now back to all of you, see what questions you may have about this process. And let me get the slides down so I get to see your beautiful faces again. So the counterintuitive part potentially here is that you may have launched your business thinking that you are selling services. Well, to be successful in the sweet spot, you're actually selling you. You as the strategic partner with solutions. Uh, I am not naive to the fact that that's scarier. It's so much safer to, to lean into services versus to claim and own our value, which is why the first step in this process is really to do the work that it takes for us to really acknowledge the value that we bring.
questions, raise hands, hit the hand up on your button or put in the chat and Colin can help me to find them. Yes, Chris. Yeah, hi, Anne. Yeah, there's a, there's a question here, which is very good. It's from Joyce and she says, uh, please explain further how an entrepreneur uh, serves and not sells. Thank you. Imagine you're having a conversation with uh, someone who's been in your life for a while. They're now in the position where they can hire you directly. When you are with them and you are under, in, you're sharing how you serve the marketplace. What are the needs you serve? And then you, for it helps me with an example of that's okay. So you mentioned to your um, the person that you're with that, hey, one of the things I'm noticing a lot of is organizations are struggling with, with uh, employee engagement right now. What's your experience? When they share what their experience is to you, with you, the last thing they expect you to do would be to sell to them. Instead, when they share what their needs are, really lean in and say, wow, that, that's, you, you know, I care about you. If there's any way I could ever be a support to you, count me in. And then you share how you're supporting others. You know, I, the organizations that I'm serving in that area, one of the things that we're doing is, you know, group programs to really find out what their, what, what their needs are, what would help them feel engaged. With some, it's individual coaching. With others, it's been a cultural engagement where we're really focusing on how people can feel more cared for, human to human leadership. So notice what I'm doing. I'm putting what I've, ways that I could serve, things that I've done with others on the side of the table as I talk about it, on the side of the table. I'm just sharing some of the things, some of the ways I can serve. That is so different than here's how I can help you. I could come in and do this X, Y, and Z, which feels like a bright light in their eyes. Like, whoa, wow, I have just felt sold to. If I put it on the side of the table, they're in choice to say, wow. Well, they're going to say two, one of two things. Either they'll say, wow, fascinating. Tell me more about the programs that, you, that you're doing with the groups. I'd like to learn a bit about that. Or tell me more about how you approach it from a systemic perspective with the whole organization. They're asking for, for you to tell them more because they are interested in learning versus you're jumping right to sale. They may say, I'm so excited for you. It feels like you found work that you are really happy with, right? That you're really enjoying. And that's a quick tell that they're not looking to learn more right now. But what it gives you is the opportunity to meet that, re honor the relationship first, relationship forward, service focused. If they would like to learn more and you can even offer, hey, why don't we even book another session where we can brainstorm together what your opportunities might be. Just serve them. No bright light in their eyes. Here's how I could sell to you or here's how I could directly support you. That, unless the relationship has already progressed there, that can be too bright. That can be too forward. That could feel like, oh, wow, I thought you were here to connect with me because we have relationship. Now it feels like you're just here to sell to me. Feels like a bait and pitch, which hurts relationships. Wonderful. Thank you. I've got another one here. Is that, at what stage would an entrepreneur apply the competence of negotiation skills? Oh, the beautiful. Thank you. The negotiation skills come in through the uh, proposal process. And uh, again, the strategies that I support entrepreneurs to understand is uh as we're going into service providers, we are on the wrong side of the negotiation power curve. And so the three-step proposal process that I teach helps us to avoid negotiations by using instead a co-creative process uh, to create options together that 
the sponsor absolutely adores. And they actually are the ones who, when we share a good, better, best option, free prices, they get to go forward with the ones that they feel best meet their needs and their budget. Any price negotiation, any straight up negotiation would come at the exchange of the level of service that's included in the option that they're choosing. So it puts us in a position, Colin, to honor our value, even when we are meeting their budget requirements. Lovely, thanks, Sam. Um, I've got one here from Henry, who I know is in in, um, the Uganda, in Uganda. So seek to build a partnership with them. Great insight. Philosophy I've always believed in and practiced, including joint undertaking of projects, etc. It's more of a statement rather than a question, but absolutely. 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 Uh, and then we've Organizations got- are also always looking for more partners that they can trust. They are looking to reduce vendors. We get to choose which line of that we want to be on. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we've got another one here. How do we get to someone who will K-L-L-R us? <laughs> Beautiful. Well, the, the here's what we know. You already have people in your life who will K-L-L-R you, who already do K-L-L-R you. And so the more vulnerable thing is, how do you reach out to the people who already know, like, love and respect you and give them a sense for what you're doing right now? I've had co- uh, people in my programs land business through parents through siblings, through high school friends, uh, through the their, through their best friends, because all of those people love, love to see you successful and go out of their way to support you to have the introductions that would be helpful following their love line, the relationships that are most strong for them that help you land this work. So it's really make your list of the people who already know, like, love and respect you and start there. You won't have to go beyond it. Yeah, lovely. Chris, I know you've had your hand up patiently waiting. Um, Would you like to put your question to Anne? Yeah, I would. Hi. So um, you said selling yourself is the hard part. I think it's an easy part because there is no uh, competence. I'm just one. So with whom I should compete. Beautiful. Um, Well, well, I just want to applaud, Chris, that it's easy for you. I love that you know that. It says you own your value and there is no competition. No, 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 it's, it's, no, no, gets harder. Oh, (laughs) darn. (laughs) For you, uh, I can imagine it's very easy. It's it's just my um, uh, assumption. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have 10,000 hours and you go and say like, this is my credentials and this is what I do. And everyone applauded, yeah, and we are taking you. But for me, I know my value, but uh, the the companies, they don't know and they need like big numbers. I don't have, I have 100 hours and I cannot make them blow. And I have, um, I used to be a, a conference speaker for uh, technical conferences. So I have also a pool uh, of people who know me and, uh, but they don't want to see to success me because if I approach them and said, how about this workshop what you attended and loved so much? How about that I go and uh, hold it in your company? And, uh, now our budget is blah, 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 blah. So they know my work. They 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 uh, had the benefits of it and they write to me and said, this is so great. We use it at the company. But when I'm like, okay, I'm now selling my offers, then nothing. Okay. Let me help you. Let me help you here. Well, first of all, I didn't always have 10,000. I mean, I had to, I, I was exactly where you are. Exactly yeah, where you are. Long, long right. time ago. A long, long, 17 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> 17 years ago. And the hardest thing for me then was not to lean into the workshop I could sell. Not to lean into coaching. Let me just name it. Organizations aren't looking to buy coaching. They're not looking to buy workshops. 
they're looking to find someone who can help them with their needs. So Chris, what I would submit is that if you put together your story, you put together your story. And the, the first step we do in my Results Now program is we spend two solid weeks honing the statement that we approach the market with. Your why you for who with what. The why you part, owning who you be, owning the value you can bring to the marketplace is where it starts. We spend the next two weeks, this is half the program, first two on the statement, the next two crafting the one page bio that's focused on you. That is the way that you really tell your story in a way that they say, oh, Chris, you know, I'm not attached to how you deliver your magic, how you bring your solutions in. I don't care if it's coaching. I don't care if it's workshops. I don't care if it's mentoring. I don't care about any of that. But yes, please, that thing that you know how to do, yes, please, we need that. And bring us some options for how we might work with you. Mm -hmm. So when people see us in one place, right, whether it's a workshop or in another forum, it's our, our next step is to help them understand, oh, I am not my service. I am not my service. I know you have a million workshop providers. You have a million coaches. What I am is a strategic thought partner in this arena. Let's connect. Let's have a conversation. And so it's owning the difference that we make. When I say own our value, our value is not our tools. Our value is the strategic partnership we offer above our tools. And that's the work. The very first order is defining what that is in a way that the people who know, love, like, and respect you know exactly where you can help and where they bring you in. Yeah, it's lovely. And I use this often when I talk to entrepreneurs as well um, and some of my regional directors in that, you know, very often when you ask someone what do they do, they quote their job title, like, I'm a business coach or I'm a business consultant or I'm a dentist or I'm a policeman or I'm a nurse. But these are not who we are or do. That is just your job title. And therefore, you need to hone that skill of when someone says to you or asks you, you know, what do you do? Don't quote your job title. You know, if you're a policeman and someone says, what do you do? You don't go, I'm a policeman. You say, I protect and serve the community in which I live in from crimes that will ruin their lives potentially, etc. So I protect them. You are a protector. Nurses look after people and care them back to health. So when you are in a conversation with someone and they say, what do you do? Then tell them what benefits it that you do to help them to overcome whatever situation they're in. You've got to get away from quoting your job title. Bingo. Titles can be, that's one of the things we work on. We don't want to title ourselves with our service. You're not a coach. You're not a consultant. You're not a, you're, what is the difference that you're making? And uh, for organizations, what's really critical is that you also have experience that you can say that you, why would they entrust you to be the one to do that service? And sometimes that's what we skip over too. So not going right to the I support, but go to, I leverage my ex experience to support gives organizations the understanding that oh okay so you've got experience in this space makes all the difference lovely yeah um i just got a couple of other comments here is that michael um said that they don't see the value hence reason you're not getting engaged and whenever you're having a conversation with someone like michael says it you've got to explain to them the value that you will bring if they engage in your service yeah and that's it's got to be awesome, that, Michael. Thank that, you. Opening gambit. Jennifer says, uh, This is really landing. Um, thank you. Uh, what is the name of your program? And she's asking. Um, so I have a lot of different ways that I support and serve. Uh, the best way to gain a sense for how I can support and serve is to go to my website, Empowered IN Coaching Institute.com. And that's all coaching for business owners. Yeah, great. Uh, Joyce has got nothing here. Um, I've always known that competition is real in the marketplace and it is healthy for business growth. So an entrepreneur must be aware of competitors and the business models, strategies a competitor is employing. 
So why are you not placing weight on the existence of comp- competition? I'm not suggesting that we play in a vacuum, not recognize that there are other people playing out there. But if my what I am is a strategic thought partner, there really isn't competition with exactly how I'm doing that. What I'm inviting uh, entrepreneur mindset shift to is typically competition shifts us into scarcity, comparison, ego, uh, all the things that are at risk of pushing us out of our sweet spot of serving into selling. So absolutely be aware of what's out there as you build your services that are high value, as you hone into the need you want to serve. But don't fall trap to the competition mindset that says it's you or them. Just stay in your lane, in your sweet spot. And your relationships and your value will carve a lane that there are no competitors in. That's the invitation. Not closed-minded, but open mindset, open heart, full-on service. Absolutely. I think you've always got to be aware that there is competitors out there, but your mindset should be, I want to be bigger, better, and faster than my competitors. And that's where you've got to focus on not in the fear that there are other people in the marketplace, because we know there is. Yeah. Um, so let's see if I can catch up here. That's the competitors. Um, nice. Emma says, greeting, happy to join this forum. I'll bet a little bit late. They, they have a, had a storm and therefore a power cut. Um, yes, we have a recording. And yes, Emma, we will send the recordings out to you. Um, and I saw there's one more thing there. Someone wanted to ask a question as well. Have I done that? Yeah, Michael has a, his hand up. Michael, would you like to put your question? Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Anne, for your presentation. That was great. Can you give us like kind of a scenario maybe? Let's take a startup, okay? And let's say they have a, an innovation that nobody knows about, all right? So you have to educate people to the solution that you can bring. So can you give us a, a feel of how can you tackle this? Because for me, it's often the case, all right? Yeah. I'm into efficiency of writing business documents. Yes, the benefits are this and this and that, shorten the business processes and whatever. But it's always difficult, you know, to try to, I, I'm going to use the, the word sell, but uh, for people to see the needs that I bring. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael. So my invitation to you would be uh, to lean into your relationships. You moved on me. To lean into your relationships. Let them know what it is you're up to now. Let them know that if there's anyone you could help, you care about them, count you in. In fact, let's talk about how I might be able to help you really streamline your business writing through the tool that I've created. Notice what I just did. They they care about you first. And then you get to care about them. Wow, if there's anyone I can help, I really want it to be you. Let's talk and figure out how I might be able to do that. You're, you're leading with, with relationship, caring, your solution provider. You're going to help other people. You sure would love to help them first. All of that's authentic. It has to be authentic and genuine. And when it is, then you will help them be excited about your product by sharing with them what could be different on the other side. What need of theirs are you solving? So that would be the the counterintuitive piece, Michael, don't be so, here's what we, don't get so excited about your service that you're leading with that. Be excited about reconnecting with the relationship and that you would love to help them. And here's what you're doing right now. Let's talk right. about how it might serve. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of more questions. Well, we like to keep these recordings to just an hour long, and we're coming up to the 57th minute now. Um, so I'm going to have to call it a day. Um, 
Firstly, for, for our audience, thank you very much for contributing, obviously, to that. The questions are amazing. We love questions because it gives us an answer, an opportunity to expand uh, um, on the theory behind what we were talking about. So thank you very much for those. And really, thank you very much indeed for your um, contribution, your insight. It's been amazing. I think we could have probably run on for another couple of hours, but um, unfortunately, we, we, we can't do that. Um, if you are looking to connect with Anne, it'll be in the presentation that we send out to you. So if you wanted to connect with Anne and learn more, I'm sure there is a way that Anne would be able to, to help you. So Anne, thank you very much indeed. I really, really appreciate it. And for our audience, always great to see you here. Thank you very much indeed. And have a great rest of the day. Thanks now, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for having me.